legal. We'll be looking at everyday matters and their legal implications. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you All Things Legal on Styles FM, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining me for another episode of All Things Legal. I am your host, Janine Lang, attorney at law. Once again, our numbers are 876-453-1444, or if you're overseas, 954-338-7973. Once again, 876-453-1444. Or 954-338-7973. I look forward to your comments and your, your feedback on a weekly basis. And today is no different. So let's share and discuss together. Um, I, I just want to remind you that this program is not meant to substitute or replace legal advice from an attorney at law retained by you and you should still consult your attorney if you have legal issues even if the facts are similar to those discussed on the program again thank you for listening and i look forward to sharing with you richard thank you for joining us um i remember you from last week richard and i'm so happy that you joined us again this week vanessa hi how are you doing thank you for joining us as well and on to the next segment, the first segment of our program, we're looking at what is in the news. Now, Nepal appeals for help to catch crocodile killers. Hmm? Um, it was reported this week in the news. I am not entirely sure if you have been following some of the things which were posted on social media this week or last week, but there have been some videos circulating and photographs as well of I think at least two or three men killing a crocodile at a fishing beach. Hi, good evening, Lenky. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm not sure if you saw that video, but Nepo says that the incident is being investigated. Good evening. Um, that's Saab. Thank you for joining us, Saab. And Nepo now says that the incident is being investigated to bring the perpetrators of this gruesome act to justice. Hi, Patrice. How are you doing? Patrice is joining us from, from New Jersey. I'm doing fine, Patrice. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, Nepa says that, you know, um, this video um, and, and this incident of these men killing this crocodile is a significant setback in the conservation of this endangered species, right? Now, under the Wildlife Protection Act, it is an offense to possess, to hunt, to kill, to capture, or willfully molest the crocodile. Individuals who are found guilty may be charged a maximum fine of $100,000 or face one year imprisonment. Now, I want to hear from you listeners. What do you think about this situation of or people? You know, I've actually heard that people eating crocodile tail in Jamaica, no, you know, it's, a, it's considered to be a delicacy. You know, in some places in the world, um, in, in, in the southern states in the United States of America, in Australia, in Central America, and of course in Asian countries, the crocodile is considered to be a delicacy, right? Richard says, people nowadays just wicked and evil worldwide, yeah, man. They don't care. They're ignorant. Yeah, I mean, it's really true. And I mean, the, the crocodile is not the most attractive animal, right? You know, I mean... You know, there are some things that I don't find particularly attractive in the animal kingdom, and the, the crocodile is one of those things. If somebody says you look like a crocodile, it's really not a compliment at all, right? Yes, they have hunting seasons for them in the United States, um, Richard, that's true. Um, it's legal in Arkansas, South Carolina, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, and Texas, right? And they even have alligator farms in um, 
in alligator and, and they, they eat specifically also the alligator in the United States and, and the crocodile as well. And sometimes they have farms where you can actually source, you know, um, these meats. Now, you know, I, I said I was talking about the, um, the crocodile, you know, not being the most attractive animal. But you know that they, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. You know, um, crocodiles play a very vital role in our in our ecosystems and specifically the the wetland environment right how do they do so they help to maintain the balance in freshwater um, ecosystem they are key predators at the top of the food chain and they eat a wide range of prey you know i i found out that there are actually aquatic um, rodents like rats which live in river areas and um these these rodents um they're actually eaten by these crocodiles you know and um you know these rodents can actually cause a horrific damage to our wetlands by stripping them of vegetation and the crocodiles also tunnel deep depressions that provide reservoirs during droughts Right. And they said that even these um, crocodile holes can be a source of life saving water for fish, birds, turtles and other creatures. Right. Studies have shown that the presence of crocodiles in the in a river actually increase the yield of fish. Right. So when you're killing the crocodiles, you actually I mean, and the fish, I think it's way more delicious than a crocodile, even though I've never tried crocodile and I would never try it. I'm vegan, and even beyond that, I have a religious prohibition against eating crocodile, right? Um, so crocodile is just not it for me. Jamaicans, I mean, really, our diets are not that exotic. And beyond that, the Wildlife Protection Act forbids us from hunting the crocodile. They're an endangered species in Jamaica. So I am imploring anyone who has any information concerning these men who were seen on the videos or in the photographs, Killing this crocodile, this gruesome act, this wondrous creature who's considered to be a descendant of dinosaurs, um, that you know they report them so that some justice can be done. Um, yet the lionfish, the lionfish, people still eat the lionfish, except that the government is actually encouraging people to eat the lionfish because they're an invasive species, right? They do some destruction to the aquatic um, ecosystem, so they're asking people to eat the the lionfish again. That's really not a part of my my dietary interest. Well, yeah, I, but my perspective is that whatever does any work of scavenging should not form part of the diet of human beings. You know, God made man upright. Man has sought out many inventions. I I believe in maintaining my my brain in an optimal state. All right. Definitely not crab. And crab, I understand. Some friends of mine have told me about crab, you know, Cassidy. That the back of the crab, which they say is the tastiest part of the crab, has some things. Yes, that is very, uh, pun intended, filthy. Okay? Right? I don't know how people could actually... The things that human beings find interest in eating, I just don't get. So crab, that's not it either. Right? Um... So, so this whole issue of the Wildlife Protection Act is very important that we, we comply. As I said before, the crocodiles, they help to maintain balance in our ecosystem. You know, they might not be so attractive. Some people kill them so, so they can have a crocodile handbag, which is very expensive. But in Jamaica, it is still considered to be an endangered species. They maintain, they serve a purpose. God doesn't make any mistake, listeners. So um, we should still be grateful that we have um, our crocodiles here. Our numbers are eight seven six four five three one four 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 and nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three that is eight seven six four five three one four 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 and nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three you are listening to all things legal with janine lang attorney at law on styles fm now another issue oh yes richard that video with the teenagers showing off with the gun you know unfortunately yes there were some videos i think between wednesday 
and yesterday this week of about four boys. I'll show it to you um, in a minute, but um, about four boys um, brandishing, you know, um, guns and removing the bullets and, you know, just uh, they look to be of school age. They, they do look to be minors. And I understand that one of the boys have been taken into custody so far. You know, unfortunately, in, in our country, you know, violence and criminality is romanticized. It's, it's seen in our music, even in the way that we express ourselves to each other. You know, you know um, even people who are not... <laughs> it's very sad, Richard. Even people who are not so-called criminals, you know, practitioners of criminality or whatnot, you know... Um, we still employ a very violent language in how we relate to to um to each other and you definitely see it when you are a motorist on the road like sometimes the promises and the threats that other motorists make because they feel that they have been violated you know um so we really need to move away from that and i agree with you richard and i really hope that those boys will be brought in and um, some investigation can be done so that justice can be done. And more importantly, that they will be rehabilitated as well. Because we need to reach our young boys. And prison is really not the answer. Now, another item that I want to discuss in this segment concerns... It wasn't really a news item, but every week in the classified section of the Sunday Gleaner or the various um, publications of the Gleaner each week, there is a section where husbands or wives, they gazette each other. You ever hear, um, you ever hear about uh, somebody talking about my gazette him or my gazette her? You know, um, I, 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 um, I remember once a man came to church, came to me at, while I was at church and, you know, he had some, difference with his wife they were separated they were not getting along and he said to me you know i would have forgive her you know or well, she gazet me and friend she gazet me i say i can't get over it now what is this whole you ever hear about gazet um cassidy you know about gazet king so gazet is pretty much um a process where someone um a husband or a wife, they're separated um, from each other and they publish a notice in the newspaper where they say, Jane Doe hereby gives notice to the public that she is now separated from her husband, John... Oh, hi, Kevoy Chambers. Thank you for tuning in. Is that one of my students? Uh, is that kind, Kevoy? I asked my students to... to um, to actually assign adjectives based on the first letter of their first name to describe themselves and to appropriate <laughs> those kinds of you know positive ad adjectives um you know um in 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 their experience but um so this gazette is 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 pretty much saying you know um i jane do give notice to the public that i am no longer cohabiting or living with my husband, John Doe, and I have no intention to satisfy or to settle any debts which he may incur, right? Now, do these Gazette notices have any real legal weight? What legal weight? What, 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 what is the strength? What is the purpose? Is there anything in the law that makes any provision for gazetting your husband or your wife? A kind of notice. Well, but the thing about it is that it's a legal myth. That's the truth. It carries no weight. And let me tell you why. So the practice, practice of gazetting a husband or wife, right? It's from an outdated practice. It was necessary at a time when wives were viewed to be the property of their husbands. And husbands were liable for their wives' debts. So normally, it would really... Initially, it started with the husbands being the one to gazette their wives. So he put his wife away and say, I'm no longer responsible for you. So I'm going to gazette you. Right. To let the world know that whatever, if you want to go on a shopping spree, if you want to go to courts or singer 
or whatever clothing store. What's the clothing store name? The popular one in, in Port Antonio there. Uh, what's, it, what's it called? I don't even know. But um, yes, those, those popular places. Yeah, she wants to go on a, a, a shopping spree. The husband is saying back in the day. In a manner of speaking, he would not be responsible. But we have moved from that outdated approach, thank God. A woman is not viewed as a property of the husband um, in that kind of archaic sense. Um, so there is really no value, no legal value in husbands or wives putting those disclaimers in the newspapers. No. The only way your husband or your wife could be liable for any debts that you incur is if you are jointly making an application for a loan. So you both go to a financial institution and your bar your co-borrowers then, right? In those circumstances, then you would both be responsible for the loan, right? Or if one stands as surety for the other or as guarantor for the other, right? Um and if you think about it logically, if you're saying that you're separated, how then can you be liable for the debts of your husband when you're not living it together anymore? But the truth of the matter is, even if you are living together, unless you both incurred the liability jointly, you cannot be made liable for your husband's or your wife's indebtedness. So... The Gazette notice it not it's not relevant. It's not necessary, um, listeners. You know it, it doesn't carry any weight. What's the weight, King? Embarrassment. Embarrassment. Yeah, but you know that's part of the reason why I don't do divorces because it is just so. You're right. That's really, and that is why the 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 brother who I told you said to me that he would have been willing to forgive anything. But for the fact that she gazetted him, say, he's saying she shame him publicly, you know, right. He considered it to be a big insult. You know, he considered it to be very embarrassing. But, you know, I mean, I don't practice divorce law. It's just too petty. I mean, I just don't understand why adults have to carry on in that way. You know, um, so I don't do divorce at all. It is a mess. And I also don't believe that. I should be involved in the process of putting asunder what God has put together. So I leave that to somebody else. Um, but yes, the Gazette notices, listeners, you can retire that practice. We have a Property Rights of Spouses Act. And, in the, and we also have a Maintenance Act in circumstances where parties are separated or divorced. Those acts, you know, can be brought into play. You can apply for maintenance, both if you're the husband or the wife. Um, and yes, of course, um, even parents, elderly parents can, can get maintenance under the Maintenance Act. And of course, children. Um, but it's, it's gender neutral in terms of maintenance. No, the law has become very equal in that respect. Yes. And um, the property rights of spouses now deals with the division of matrimonial property. So really, there is enough provision in the law. There, and you can't take a gazette notice to court. It makes no difference. So if you and your husband went to, to the bank and you took out a loan together, you can't. You can't gazette her, okay, Cassidy? You can't gazette her and then bring it to the... No, because there is no legal way to it. There is just no legal... There is no source. The paper doesn't... Because you already... You would have to relinquish that contract. So the gazette notice would not assist you. All right, so we need to... We need to move away from doing some of these little things. You know, sometimes a lot of Jamaicans think that there, there is some legal value or merit in certain practices that we have done. I'm sorry? No, it, it, it really doesn't. It really doesn't have any value. But um, a lot of Jamaicans do believe that it does have value. And some people feel comfortable doing it. But it makes no difference. Right? So... Those uh, now that you have seen the light, walk in it and dispel the darkness. All right, so we're 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 no longer practicing that whole gazette um, business. Um, 
you know, the main thing that we're going to be discussing this evening as we go into the main menu item is the coronavirus or the COVID-19. We want to look at it and how and whether our laws are equipped to handle it. You know, um, I think a week ago, a ship docked in Ocho Rios and um, there was a particular passenger who was isolated on the ship. And because of that, the Ministry of Health took a decision that this person was not entitled, the ship in fact was not entitled um, to, to dock in our waters and the passengers would not be allowed to disembark. And there is actually legislation which addresses issues of that nature, as well as um, how the government and the state should, or, the, or medical practitioners should address themselves where Jamaicans contract the corona. You know, I think we have already identified four quarantine locations. You know, I, I, I remember some time ago they had a town hall meeting concerning St. Joseph's Hospital and the, the, the residents of um, Vineyard Town, they were none too happy that they, were, they had selected that particular hospital to be a quarantine location for possible um, corona, um, the coronavirus um, victims. So we want to look at some of the legislations um, and regulations addressing these infectious diseases and how the state is empowered to deal with it, to stem the disease, to prevent um, its spread. You know, um, and I, I just want to say that this program is called All Things Legal, Not All Things Political. So I, I have no desire or interest to discuss any political um, issues concerning um, the minister or the government. We're only speaking about it from a legal perspective and um, from a human perspective in terms of how you feel about the situation. But we don't want to get disagreeable. So I think that we should leave politics out of the mix. Right? Um, so we're not discussing it from a political perspective. I hope to have a doctor join us this evening as well. Hopefully she will be available um, after the break. And we will have some questions in terms of certain precautions that you can take to prevent contraction of the virus. And in the event that you do contract the virus, what steps you should take to protect yourself. Now, you know, a lot of fear mongering has been, been, been demonstrated since this, this virus came about and is, has no, um, I guess, descended into what is called a, a global crisis. But, you know, they say numbers don't lie. And I think this morning, um, based on my checks on the numbers, I think it's 95,600 persons globally who have um, contracted the coronavirus. 95,600. However, um, over 90% of that 95,000 is in China, right? And 3,000 persons have died um, from corona. But the statistics also show that it's really older people, elderly people, as well as children um, who are more prone to succumbing to this virus um, if they're, because their immune systems, you know, older people, um, babies, their immune systems are more um, fragile and delicate, you know, um, so the, the, the odds aren't so bad. So when you look at it, 3,000 of 95,000, that's less than 2%, you know, um, and there are steps that we can take, you know, to prevent contraction. The Ministry of Health has actually encouraged us to maintain a distance of at least two meters from persons who are coughing or sneezing. And truth be told, no, but you know, the truth is, it should not have taken the corona for us to be employing some of these very ordinary 
run of the mill practices that we should have been doing in the first place. You are coughing, you are sneezing, you cover your mouth, right? And there are some persons that they have a very bad practice of not covering their mouth. And that's one of the precautions that the Ministry of Health has told us, but that's just good hygiene, King. You know, they say you should cover your mouth and your noses with a tissue when coughing or sneezing and then discarding it. And why are they saying you should discard it? Because a virus or whatever you would have coughed out or sneezed out is now in the tissue, right? It's active in it. So you need to now dispose of that tissue to prevent yourself from even reinfecting yourself or infecting somebody else, you know? Avoid touching your face or your, your, your mouth or your nose unnecessarily. You know, I, I was reading something and they said that um, touching your face is, is so natural that it happens for one person on average of 90 times per day. You don't realize how often you touch your face. It's almost innate, you know. Um, wash your hands frequently with soap or water or use a hand sanitizer. And they said that if you're using a hand sanitizer, the hand sanitizer has to have an alcohol um, content of 60% or more. Otherwise, you're just rubbing up some, some liquid on your hand. You know, it's, uh, it's the, um, the alcohol that really sanitizes your hand from whatever virus or bacteria that you're trying to avoid, right? And they said you should wash your hands thoroughly. When you're washing your hands thoroughly, you're paying attention to those areas between your fingers, right? To ensure that you're washing your hands thoroughly, wash around your thumb, you know? And they said a good idea, I think they said 20 to 30 seconds you should be washing your hands because sometimes we just wash your hands so fast. But they say a good judge of how long you should be washing your hands is if you sing the happy birthday song twice, okay? So Cassidy, we're washing our hands and we're singing happy birthday. Happy birthday and we sing it twice. Um, you prefer the Lotta song? What song is that, um, King? Money, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> okay so when we get back we're going to be talking about um you know our readiness from a legislative perspective and we hope to get our doctor online we're right up on the break so um stay tuned until we come back join your host janine lang on styles fm this and every friday from 4 p.m to 5 p.m for all things legal We'll be looking at everyday matters and their legal implications. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you All Things Legal on Styles FM, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Administration Jamaica presents its annual special taxpayers assistance program on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 18th and 19th, Tuesday, March 4th, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, March 10th, 11th, and 12th. Come in and be assisted with checking and completing your annual returns, e-services, TRN, and other tax information. Come prepared by having your records ready. Remember, the deadline for filing your returns is March 15th. Avoid penalties and interest by filing early. Tax Administration Jamaica, working together to serve you even better. Mumma bless in association with the hustlers and presidential Ron Robin. I used to swim with me sportswear. This Saturday, March 7, 2020. You know, March Braffers roll out. Chinas launches at St. Thomas. Galaxy Sauna play. Special guest, full clip. Black of Pearl. Black Eyes DJ Momo. A beer for my guest. Clear this day. Now the fence and the market. Yeah, I'm gonna do it in a swimwear meet sportswear. We have a CDOT Chinas line. Zane's Pharmacy is now open at shop number 8, Presser Plaza, Morant Bay. We're here to satisfy all your pharmaceutical needs and more. Currently, we do free blood pressure checks and blood sugar testing, as well as HIV testing and counseling. Zane's Pharmacy, open Mondays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and on Sundays for your convenience from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Telephone 876-779-0006. 
or WhatsApp your prescriptions to 876-855-6291. That's Zane's Pharmacy, now open at shop number 8, Presa Plaza, Morant Bay. Hello? Talk fast, you have one minute, because on a Friday night, me have to tune in to Real Talk on Stars 96 FM. Me and you have questions about love, birds, and the bees. Not to mention the ticks and the fleas. So you try tuning in on a Friday night between 9 and 12 for Real Talk. At the show, we discuss everything real and nothing ID. Join your host, Janine Lang, on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for all things legal. We'll be looking at everyday matters and their legal implications. All things being equal, stay tuned with Janine Lang as she presents to you all things legal on Styles FM, Fridays, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we are back. You are tuned into Styles FM on all things legal with your host, Janine Lang, attorney at law. And we are talking about the coronavirus. We're looking at this evening. It is a quasi um, legal medical um, program, a legal medical program. Um, concerning the 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 um, available provisions, the regulations, um, the le- the laws and regulations um, concerning um, you know health concerns in or in our country and whether or not we are equipped to deal with the coronavirus. But before we get into that, I want us to take a look at um, and have a discussion. Um, concerning what we know about the coronavirus or the COVID-19. So we will be joined shortly by Dr. Sadania Ricketts. Dr. Ricketts is a primary care physician in the St. James Health District. Okay, so we are going to try to get Dr. Ricketts online now. Dr. Ricketts. Hi, Miss Lang. How are you? Hi. Hi, Dr. Ricketts. How are you? I'm doing well. All right. So the listeners of um, All Things Legal, they want to to know a little bit more about this COVID-19. Could you just give a brief description of the virus? Okay, sure. I can do that. First of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. I know you are very busy and our doctors are working so hard, you know, um, to assist us with the various health complications and we honor and respect our doctors. So um, thank Thank you you so much. Right. So COVID-19, as we know it, first of all, let me just clarify that it's a virus. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And it's a part of the Corona family or the arbovirus family, right? So viruses like all other organisms that belong to families. So the coronavirus, COVID-19, it is a part of the arbovirus family, particularly the coronavirus, right? Mm-hmm. So the reason it's called novel is because this is the first time that it has been detected in humans. Okay. Right. It was previously a virus that was only infectious to animals. Right. Right. So we are, as humans, we are familiar with the coronavirus. Is what we call the common cold. Right. That's typically what it is. Mm-hmm. Right. So in a nutshell, the coronavirus is another virus, the family of viruses that can cause respiratory illnesses characterized by a cough, Running nose, sore throat, and in particular for this virus, it it is um, characterized by a fever. Okay, all right. So those symptoms sound very familiar, right? You see, it's a corona right. family, um, a respiratory condition similar to the right. common cold and the flu. Okay, thank you so much for that. Right. Now, in terms of the precautions that we can take to prevent contracting um, this corona, could you share some precautions? Sure. 
Um, and just as I mentioned, that it's a part of the, vi- the family of viruses that we know to cause the common cold, the mm-hmm. same precautions would suffice. So if it is for flu season, as we're in flu season now, everybody walking around with a face mask and everybody's being more cautious, making sure they're washing their hands and they're avoiding people coughing and sneezing. Yes. The same precautions would apply. Okay. Right? So you want to ensure, one, that you're staying adequately hydrated. Mm-hmm. Viruses tend to take root, for want of a better word. Mm-hmm. They infect your cells and they replicate or you're, you're more likely to get a virus when you are not adequately hydrated. Okay. And hydration here doesn't mean walking around and drinking your sweet juices, your sugary drinks. It means water. Mm-hmm. Right. So you need to make sure you're drinking adequate amounts of water. Mm-hmm. You want to limit your contact with others who are showing respiratory symptoms. So members of the family who have a cough or only nose, a cold, mm-hmm. you want to limit how your contact with them. But that doesn't mean you're going to shut them off in a room by themselves, mm-hmm. but you protect yourself from the respiratory droplets. So frequent hand washing, if you have to cough or sneeze, you do it in the cook of your arm, your elbow, mm-hmm. or you use a tissue to control the droplets and then you discard that. Right. And then you wash your hands immediately. Mm-hmm. What is important to note for the coronavirus is that you cannot contract it unless you come into contact with someone who has had it. Right. Currently, we don't have any known cases or confirmed cases in Jamaica. Right. So it's unlikely that you're going to develop a cough and cold tomorrow and have the coronavirus because you would not have come in contact with someone who has had it. Right. Okay. In terms of other precautions, as I said, because it's a virus that would have been spread from animals, you mm-hmm. want to make sure that you thoroughly cook your meat if you're a meat eater. Um, and avoid wild animals as best as you can. Yes. And that comes as well with a caveat because it's not yet identified in our animals. Yes. That doesn't mean that we're going to be walking around and be scared of our animal population. But should the disease get here, then those precautions would apply. Okay. All right. Um, I'm sorry? Oh, I'm not, I don't, <laughs> one of the listeners is asking if, if it can be transferred from humans to animals. I'm not really sure if, if there are any known cases of that. But do yes, you... I, I cannot comment on that either. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, but you had touched some some of the symptoms of the virus, the coronavirus. You just want to just right. remind us of those symptoms, please, Dr. Ricketts. Sure, sure. Case definition, meaning the symptoms that would classify you for being under suspicion. Mm-hmm. You have to have a fever. You have to have some respiratory distress, meaning shortness of breath, um, a cough, and a sore throat. That currently, that, what, that's a part not a triad. Those four things. Mm-hmm. And oh. it doesn't have to be all. It's a fever plus one or more of any of the other three, being the cough, the, cough, the sore throat, and the shortness of breath. Right. Um, so those are the symptoms that we look out for. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Dr. Ricketts. Um, in relation to the treatment options... Um, what treatment options are currently available? Um, you know, the Minister of Health, um, and, and I'm sure with, the, you know, being a primary care physician in St. James, that you guys are kind of anticipating, you know, preparing in advance if there are any cases that should hit the island, what treatment options have been um, explored? All right. What's the best way to tackle treatment options? I think we should start based on the severity of symptoms mm-hmm. or presentation of symptoms. So if it is that we do have confirmed cases and you would think you might have come in contact with someone who has the virus or is suspected to have the virus, mm-hmm. you want to present to your nearest healthcare facility immediately. Mm-hmm. 
unlike the other flu-like illnesses, mm -hmm. this one requires that we put you under quarantine or isolate you so we can limit the spread of the virus. Right. So if you think you have or may have the virus, it's important that you present to your healthcare provider immediately. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the first thing to start with. In terms of treatment, so this is not something that you're going to try to treat at home. Mm -hmm. Unless you've been cleared and told to self-isolate or quarantine. Right. Right? So it is mostly supportive care. Mm-hmm. In terms of what your treatment options are. It's a virus and there are antivirals that are available, such as the TAM flu, as a cell tamiver that we know about. Mm -hmm. um, the virus does show some response to it. And it is something that we do have on the market here. We but have it? We have it here or we don't? We do, we do. We okay. have Tamiflu. What's it called? Tamiflu. Tamiflu? Yes, that's one of the brand names. The generic name is us. Oh, I just said it. I know I'm forgetting. <laughs> that's okay. Tamiflu. It will come back. Right. Yes, it will come back to me. Okay. Um, right, so the virus does show some response to that because it is an antiviral. Okay. Um. I was listening briefly to a conference yesterday that suggested that there is some response to some of our other antivirals as well. I won't mention the name, but just to say that there are options. However, because we are in uncharted territory, mm -hmm. it is mostly trial and error. Right. It is supportive care, making sure that the person stays adequately ventilated if it is that they are in respiratory distress, meaning they're having difficulty to breathe. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, for your other flu like symptoms, staying hydrated and hydrated is important. So keeping your patients who are ill hydrated via IV fluids is another thing. Okay. Um, but it's mostly treating symptoms as they present and trying to stay on top of the patient's ventilation and allowing their body to fight. Okay, okay. So so maintaining good, you know, immunity is, is important then. To right. build up your immune system is important. Yes. To remain, keep and healthy. And during, yes, for sure. And during this season, I always encourage my patients to want to make sure they're drinking lots of water to if they never ever believe in eating fruits or blending their vegetables and making their natural juices before, I encourage them to do this at this time mm -hmm. because that's a natural source of the vitamins and the antioxidants that are important in fighting viruses such as this one. Okay. All right, thank you. I, I feel I feel so much more comforted having you know discussed um, discussed it with you because you know um, quite a few persons are so fearful of this virus. You know, it's in the news every day, and we're not okay. trying to. Um, to to underestimate you know its effect and its impact but based on what you have said it's it is not a death sentence it can be managed it and is not the data that we currently have suggests that most of the deaths that have occurred are one in the elderly and in people who have pre-existing conditions for example like somebody with hypertension mm -hmm. or a pre-existing lung condition, maybe like asthma or COPD. Mm -hmm. So that's what the data is suggesting currently. Okay. It's important as a nation, we don't go into panic mode mm -hmm. because when we panic, you know, we tend to make this more silly decisions. Yeah, poor decisions, right. Poor, yeah, poor decisions. Right? Yes. Um, so if we keep informed, if we practice good hygiene, if we try to look out for each other, so if you are experiencing a respiratory illness, get a mask, wear a mask, protect your family and friends and colleagues from exposure. Mm -hmm. Stay home. Yes. Don't go to work. Don't go. Don't send your children to school. Mm -hmm. Try and limit the exposure to others, and that way we can eradicate anything that comes quicker mm -hmm. if we limit the spread. Right. 
Okay, thank you so much. You really gave so much um, useful information, didn't she, um, Cassidy and King? And we're so grateful to you, Dr. Ricketts. Thank you so much for sparing some time to join us here on All Things Legal. All right, take care then. Bye bye. You too. Okay, so callers, you have heard um, from the doctor, Dr. Sadonia Ricketts, primary care physician, um, coming to us out of St. James, out of the St. James Health um, District. You know, um, I see, um, I oh, the doctor has gone. You know, maybe we're we're going to probably have to have a, a follow up for this program because some of your questions, I really am not equipped. I'm a lawyer, <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Um, I am not equipped to answer. But I see a comment come in here. A person says the coronavirus crisis is getting quite frightening because following the news, some countries are canceling flights, closing schools, stopping non essential travel. Some churches are canceling how they worship. Why is this virus commanding such reaction? worldwide compared to other viruses and diseases that have broken out in the past. Well, the doctor addressed this because she said that this is the first time that you've had a, a, a situation where the, the virus has actually been transferred or um, from an animal to a human being. But the corona diseases from the corona family have been around from before because it's from the same family as the common cold or the flu. So it's not anything new from that perspective, but the, the way that it is contracted is new. I'm seeing another with um, listeners saying um, uh, they're say this person is suggesting that the eucalyptus um, essential oil has antiviral effects against coronavirus SARS. These essential oils may help you dealing with COVID nineteen. If you have a breathing aid or ointment, use a steam from hot water to improve your breathing. Pour hot water into a cup or bowl and then breathe in the steam. This is this is this is good information because certainly the eucalyptus is very important. Even when you and it's a coronal um, virus of the same family as the flu, so eucalyptus is good. Um, Next, another person asks if, if they get it one time, if they can get it again. I will have to find out from the doctor, um, um, listener, because as I said, I, I'm not really equipped to, to, to give that information. So perhaps we'll have to have a part two of, of that issue, um, Cassidy. Um, okay, I'm happy that you're enjoying the program, Kevoy. Once again, our numbers are 876-453-1433. Or nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three. Again, eight seven six four five three one four four four. Or nine five four three three eight seven nine seven three. You are listening to All Things Legal with Janine Lang, attorney at law. And it's a medical legal program this evening, um, King. <laughs> We're talking about medical legal issues too because, I mean, corona is on the tip um, of everybody, um, everybody's tongue and it would be remiss of us if we never addressed our minds to it as well. So, um, of course, you know that there's a travel banning effect for five countries now. Um, these countries are China, Italy, um, South Korea, Singapore, and Iran, right? And and these and the travel ban is in place because these court these countries have reported the majority of cases, right? Um, in relation to this coronavirus, no. There are two particular legislations. This is the area now where I am equipped king. I can talk about the law. <laughs> I can't talk about the medicine part about it. That's why we had Dr. Ricketts. But there are two um, specific um, legislations, the Public Health Act, and then there is also the Quarantine Act, right? And then there is also a Public Health Class 1 Notifiable Diseases Order um, from 2003, you know, um, so those are the specific legislations um, dealing with notifiable um, diseases or communicable um, diseases. Now, um, a notifiable disease um, of the Public Health Act is any disease that is um, communicable, meaning it is contagious, right? And, um, you know, um, the... 
the Public Health Act has certain regulations for addressing communicable diseases in Jamaica. And this includes, um, of course, treatment and, um, and prevention, um, also the disinfection, closing and destruction of buildings. You know, some buildings can be condemned, you know, because they consider them to be a public health crisis, you know, issue. And um, the, under the Public Health Act, the minister can also prohibit, like say, for instance, um, if you look, for example, at Italy and even in China, for example, you know, um, you know, China is one of the most densely populated countries in our world. Over a billion people live in China. But, and in Wuhan, um, they, have, they, they have been so affected by the coronavirus that this place being so heavily populated is now like a ghost town. People are no longer, you know, traversing public spaces as much. So there is a prohibition on the assembly of persons when a communicable disease, you know, is 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 being um is 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 is, is in great numbers, you know, in a particular country. And the Public Health Act of Jamaica contemplates and anticipates this kind of situation. So if the corona should come to Jamaica, we would not be able to carry on as usual. You know, there would be a prohibition on, you know, public assembly. Um, there might also be a closure of public schools, and this is addressed in Section 19 of the Public Health Act, right? Um, in Italy, in Italy, in Japan, as well as in China, um, ser several schools, I think all, I think they said in Japan that schools would be closed for a month you know, maybe some of the students might be happy to get this, <laughs> this, this, this corona, early. Corona break. Uh, instead of calling it a summer break, I call it a corona a break, right? I don't really want to joke about it, King. I don't want to joke about it. It's a funny joke, but I don't, <laughs> but I don't want to joke. I don't want to make light of something that's affecting people so much, you know? Once again, our, our numbers are 876-453-1444. Or 954-338-7973. Again, 876-453-1444. Or 954-338-7973. You're listening to All Things Legal with Janine Lang, Attorney at Law. A further section um, in relation to these communicable diseases in the Public Health Act concerns the right of a medical officer, as a chief medical officer of Jamaica, to enter upon private premises, right, if for ensuring provision, um, compliance with the provisions of the Act. So if they believe that it is in the interest of public health, maybe there is a person who is infected with the virus, they can actually, ordinarily they wouldn't have that power, but they, have, they can step in if, if, for example, the person refuses to take um, treatment and they constitute no a threat to the health of their neighbors or whatnot, the, the chief medical officer can step in to private premises. And the law in Section 2 says that premises includes ships and boats within the territorial waters of the island and all aircraft aircraft in the island so if ships come in if um, boats come in if uh, an airplane come in the chief medical officer also has jurisdiction to go into these vessels and to remove persons and to treat with them in particular um, ways um, a person says, okay, a person says, uh, somebody is saying that if there's one case in Jamaica, I am staying home, no joke. Well, <laughs> you know, that might be, that might be good. That might be good to do so. Um, if you want to make a comment and you don't have our numbers and you're listening, our numbers are 876-453-1444 or 954-338-7973. You are tuned in to All Things Legal on Styles FM. Now, um, there's a class one notifiable diseases order. I spoke with a representative from the Ministry of Health and the representative um, indicated that um, the representative ind indicated that, you know, once a 
communicable disease is identified globally, for example, um, what they do is that they write to the chief parliamentary council and then that disease is gazetted under the class one notifiable diseases order, right? And it is added to the list of notifiable diseases. This is what happened when, you remember, there was the Ebola situation in, in African countries. So they added that to the list now of diseases that the government would have jurisdiction in terms of um, preventing the contraction of the, the, the disease and controlling, controlling it in terms of its treatment as well. Um, they did that also with Chip V, and we know about Zik V too. Thank God I never got any of them. You got Chick V, Cassidy? Oh, yeah. Uh, you got it too? Oh, my. I didn't get it. Thank God. <laughs> I did not get Chick V or Zik V, you know. Um, so the Public Health Act and the Public Health um, Class 1 Notifiable Diseases Order contemplates um, these various diseases and empowers the chief medical officer to take steps, you know, to prevent the contraction of the disease by other persons who have not been infected. So um, they would have added the corona now to these diseases because they have a list of diseases, a long list. I mean, some of the diseases, they have rubella, cholera, AIDS, meningitis, measles, malaria, rubella, tuberculosis, um, yellow fever, you know, um, the plague, you know, the plague is a long time ago. Um, you know, so, you know, these are, these are, these are diseases which are contemplated in the, the public health um, class one notifiable diseases order. I want to see that comment there. What will happen if the chief medical officer is being refused entry to these premises? Um, well, the person could try to refuse, but the, the, the act also empowers the police, the arm of the state to, and you can be fined and imprisoned if you refuse to cooperate. So it carries a criminal element to it. So if you refuse entry, the police is going to be on you, right? And um, you can face some prison time, right? And, and they can bring you into prison and quarantine you just the same. <laughs> So don't you worry about that, right? There is also the Quarantine Act. This is a very old legislation in Jamaica from 1951. I wasn't even born then. Not even King was born. Or Cassidy. <laughs> right? It never exists. Not even in a thought. As a matter of fact, in 1951, my mother wasn't even born. Right? So this Quarantine Act also um, includes a... a, 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 a wide spectrum of diseases, including fever arising from the Aedes um, aegypti mosquito. And we know about Aedes um, aegypti mosquito because that is the mosquito that created a lot of havoc with the GV, right? And then um, cholera, yellow fever, pla the plague, etc. I mean, I think it also included polio. And I think Jamaica eliminated polio in 1991, something like that, right? So under the Quarantine Act, you know, you, we know what quarantine means, to isolate. So the Minister of Health can isolate. Um, specifically, um, it covers a lot of um, power of the, the minister to refuse entry to a ship who wants to dock in our port if they believe that this ship has an infected person that can pose a threat to the public health of Jamaica, right? And the, the legislation uses an expression called pratique. It's a French word that it means permission granted to a ship to have dealings with a port given after quarantine or on showing a clean bill of health. So last week, when the Minister of Health decided that the ship that came to dock in Otorius waters, it was not given pratique. It was not given permission to dock in our waters based on the Quarantine Act. Right, because there was a person on board who was showing certain symptoms similar to the corona, and that person was in isolation on that boat. Right, so the quarantine act touches, um, you know, the power of the minister to quarantine vessels, whether it's ships, boats, aircrafts, um, etc. And of course, they also have 
the arm of in terms of the police um, thing, they can also take action against these um, boats if they refuse to comply. I found some um, interesting um, things as well that just for your own information, um, you know, ships, they fly f- flags. And um, I found out that when you have a Q flag, so it it has the letter Q during the daytime, it means my ship is healthy and I request free pratique or I request free docking, right? Permission to dock. And then if you have a QQ flag, it means, this is under the same quarantine act, it means my ship is suspect. That is to say, I have had a case or cases of infectious disease more than five days ago, or there has been an unusual mortality among rats on board. You know that rats are vectors of disease. So, um, you know, ships can really be, um, it's a whole city on on that boat right there, you know. And then uh, you can have another flag now. That says QL, signifying my ship is infected. That is to say, I have had a case or cases of infectious diseases less than five days ago. So these ships coming into our ports, they have to fly certain signs, especially in view of this global crisis with the corona, to say to or see police or whatnot, this is the state of my ship. But at the same time, our minister can make an executive decision as to whether or not because they have to inquire of the master of the ship where have you been what's the nationalities of the persons who are on board and then they make a decision because every country has the sovereign right to decide who they want to pass their borders that is the sovereign right of jamaica right um so we uh we have overspent our time you know, um, maybe we'll have to touch this back next week. But we have been talking about the Corona, the Public Health Act, the Quarantine Act, the Class 1 Notifiable Diseases Order. And um, I just want to remind you of some of the tips that Dr. Ricketts had left with us. She indicated that we should wash our hands regularly, right? We should avoid being in contact with persons who are coughing and sneezing. And we should cover our mouths when we are coughing and sneezing. Either we cough in our elbow, right? Or in a tissue, which we dispose of when we're finished. And um, she also said that we should try to maintain um, good health, like eating properly, juicing the vegetables or the fruits. And um, she said that, what else did she say? Tell me what else she said. We should remain hydrated. Cassidy, were you listening to the goodly doctor? (laughs) <laughs> we should remain we should remain hydrated so that we can prevent you know they say prevention better than cure right so we want to avoid contracting the coronavirus but if in fact it comes here the doctor says it's really not a death sentence you know so don't get yourself in a frenzy you know um you know we can we will see the back of this and um it was so wonderful to for you have um joined us this week all things being equal thank you so much um listener i really appreciate that vote of confidence and i i welcome all of your comments and questions on a weekly basis i enjoy hearing from you some of you are a little shy but um i want to hear from you and remember that um you can suggest topics for discussion as well we're an open program. If there are any issues that's, you know, really a burning issue on your mind, you can send in your topics and we can have a, a talk and a little discussion about it. So all things being equal, join me next week for all things legal. Take care until then. Join your host, Janine Lang on Styles FM this and every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. 